Hi everyone, welcome back to another session by K21 Academy and today our expert trainer will be discussing about everything that you need to know about getting started with Azure DevOps. So let's get into the video. Let's understand what is DevOps and what is the role of DevOps engineer. So being a DevOps engineer, what do I do? So very simple, you will be focusing on combining the concept of people and process together. And all together, this focuses on implementing continuous integration and delivery. So you focus on the best practices of optimizing. Latest course outline would be this. You will be learning from module one. Half of the module will be covering, which is getting started on DevOps transformation journey. Module two about developing enterprise DevOps. Module three about implementing continuous integration with Azure pipelines and GitHub actions. Module four, talking about designing and implementing a release strategy. Module five about how do you implement pipelines, the continuous integration and delivery pipelines with the security. Module six, talking about infrastructure as a code and automation services in Azure. Module seven, talking about security and validation of code in terms of best practices. Module eight, about design and implement dependency management. Module nine, about continuous feedback. And all these are the nine modules with 20 plus labs probably we will cover in the process. Now, as I told, this is the exam standpoint weightage which you see here. So we call them as uh, study areas. Microsoft has broken down your exam prospective study areas as configure process and communications with a weightage of 10 to 15 percentage, meaning in the exam of Microsoft, out of let's say 40 to 60 questions, whichever you get in the exam, 10 to 15 percentage will come in this area. Design and implement source control with a variety of 15 to 20 percentage you can expect. Implement an instrumentation strategy with a 10 to 15 percentage and develop security and compliance with 10 to 15. Very simple. More the weightage, more the questions you can expect in the exam. Less the weightage, less questions you can expect. And based on that is where the training is designed, which we will focus on. When I talk about the concept of DevOps, very simple. First module or first lesson we are looking for now is planning for it. Now make it this way, you are an organization trying to adapt DevOps. So how do you start with? What do you exactly do over? So the way the process will work around for you is that first thing we have to plan for DevOps and office is trying to adapt DevOps, then how do they do? They have to plan. So what is the planning? So planning would be like, what is the technology on which they are building the project? If they are trying to develop, let's say a website, what is the technical stack? And who is the team that builds the solution? The team who builds the solution. And the deadlines and the iterations. In other words, when the project to be completed within the time frame. And who will do what? Which person in the team is responsible for what action? And keeping a track on the status is responsible. So basically, what is the status of the job? How many weeks it has been done or months it has been done will be responsible. Now, coming to the line here, planning for DevOps is necessary to go with the flow. And that is where you need to understand to keep a track on who in my office is doing which job and their status, you will make use of certain concepts called stories, features, epics, backlogs, tasks, or bugs. So we can call them as work items, which can help you to manage tasks or activities in your office on who is responsible for what and what is completed and what is pending. A story can be a big scenario in a perspective of a user. So as a customer, I have my own concern with the module. I can explain in a story. We can call it as user story. Features in a project or an application, I want to have certain modules, like I want to have a chatbot in my website, we call it as a feature. Now going forward, these things, they are individual components, but they will combine together on a process, I can say. 
Now that is called planning of DevOps. Now, as I told, you're trying to now create, a, let's say a website, which is a kind of automobile application, which has a module of insurance claiming in that application. So customer can come to your website, go claim an insurance in your website by mentioning the spare parts or any damages that happen to their vehicle. Now to talk about that here, the first concern, as I told, what technology are developing your software on? It's .NET or .NET Core, PHP, or Python. That is important to understand, do I have a team or should I recruit someone new to my business? So if I have a team, how many of them I have within how many more days they can get the job done to reach to the deadline I have here. Apart from that, out of the all people in the team, not everyone knows everything. So who will do which activity? And what is the option I can use? Kind of, let's say some kind of a calendar that can keep a track on what is the current status? What is the future status and everything? So to make it easy, neat and clean, we go now make it happen. Now imagine in the automobiles application, a module of insurance claim is being implemented by you. Now it's, and when I say you, it's your team, consider that. Now you have to say this entire concept by breaking it down. So we are gonna explain it with a term called EPIC. So EPIC is a very big concept that will, in, that will consist of so many entities inside. So logically a feature called EPIC, we call it as EPIC. In this, you will say the title AI module for insurance claim to be done by a particular team which I have selected already in the process. Now this team which I'm selecting, maybe they are already expertized in this technical area. Now, inside this EPIC of AI module, which I'm talking about, the next thing comes to the count as feature. What is feature? When you talk about it, my customer said that he needs an AI module for insurance claim. You can't simply blindly go with that. What do you mean by that? What is that AI module? So maybe a customer told according to their discussion with them in the call, we came to know that customer needs some kind of requirement, which made us to decide that we can use this custom vision API in our application. And also that API must be able to get trained in a way such that if tomorrow there is a new spare part that is getting added to the portfolio of our website, probably it's a, it's a let's say a bicycle chain, just an example. Then what is the, aftermarket chain or in other words what is the original product of a bicycle chain when it is coming fresh from the company versus a bicycle chain that is broken such data we should feed into the api which is the custom vision api so that's a kind of training we need to do so customer said that he should be able to feed the knowledge by himself so we need to be able to train the api is what we understood now we cannot do both the features at once. We can do by parallel activities, but usually the way breakdown happens is, now for the first requirement you told, which is a feature, what are all the backlogs? So when you say backlog, the problems, what are all the set of problems I must sort to get the job done? That's a backlog. What is the first problem? If you wanna use custom vision API, then you actually have to write code which will invoke this custom vision API in case if you are using Microsoft provided one, then you're actually supposed to write a code that will invoke Microsoft provided custom vision API. Next thing, you have the next part, training the algorithm to predict the damage. So how do I do this? As I told your requirement is to train. So something to be done, the another problem to be sorted we should have a way an option to focus on training that algorithm. Now for this first backlog, we need to write the code, what shall I do? So task is the activity that your developers will do for the first problem I'm trying to bring on a set of actions. What is the first task? You can use Azure's artifact management service and invoke the computer vision API. What does it mean by that? 
very simple you can call this computer vision api which is a no uh, sorry th that's a typo here it should be custom vision according to our example so typically the relevant libraries and code must be written which will invoke this custom vision api so one of the developers should write this code is the requirement is that done with that no what is the second thing code alone doesn't work a customer needs a ui so you can add a user interface maybe a chatbot canvas we can make him to add on doing these two tasks which could be done by one or two different or multiple developers together you will now have a chatbot which will be able to invoke this api for doing the insurance claim now a point to be seen by you who will do the job that's your team so you remember here we discussed team who builds so that is this team let's say ai team is something i have which consists of people like kishore nishant and shreesha so three different people in the team i can assign them the possible option and that is where once you assign one of these guys in here they will be able to go ahead and do the job of doing any possible discussions now if you get what i have in here the story features epics and everything comes to count we are not using story except that everything else we have used bugs are not used because bugs or any problems in the code that you create as a bug and make someone to work now makes sense technical stack is over code comes makes the job team will build it fine how do you deal with this deadlines or who will do what and how do you track the status these three we will do the feature called iterations we will use some roles and assign the jobs to my people and we will track those status of the jobs using dashboard so this is your project where in the overview you get a overview view you have a lot of things like dashboards wiki so what these are so they are all some of the choices for you and moreover you have boards in the left side repos you have you have pipelines test plans to track test and artifacts you have you will maintain your packages here so technically you have everything in one place so you're going to track everything right in here right from here and that's the concept of artifact so guys this was our expert from team k21 academy and if you want to learn more about the concepts discussed in depth then we have something really special for you we have our free class on microsoft azure devops certification under this free class you'll be learning about why to learn devops on azure cloud what is devops who should learn about it some demo and a lot of hands-on and a lot more interesting stuff so if you want to register for this free class all you have to do is just log on to k21academy.com forward slash az4002 and after that you'll be seeing this kind of interface you just have to click on book your free seat now and select any event date according to your availability add your name your email number your phone number and click on book your free seat now and you'll be seeing this kind of url on the extreme right save that add it to your calendars and i'll see you in the free class till then keep learning